servers. And it's just, just a worthwhile of note, the main reason we've done this is to actually allow for us to replicate it. And uh, this is the, I would say, the most uh, major dramatic change. I'm sorry, Nick, but why did you switch from uh, Cyrus? Uh, Cyrus gives us, a, uh, gives us replication support. That's the main reason we've switched. Uh, Dovecot doesn't have replication just yet. They might have it in a future version, but it's a major release for Dovecot. So it will take some time. Uh, the open source will probably still use Dovecot, though. Uh, we yeah, might so use Cyrus. Yeah, I know. I, I know that I know the benefits of Dovecot. It's just that with uh, w when we're trying to redundant make it redundant, we uh, we had to make a switch. Uh, but let me get back into this. We have a very dramatic change in our in our sort of uh, in our organization. We've added a concept of a user, and I'll get into more detail when I demonstrate this. But this really changes most of our organization. Many of you know that what we have is we have extensions that are uh, attached to stations. And it's just extensions. The extensions are everything in our system. Uh, so many of you who've used both open source and our commercial product have seen that you know they have extensions, they have everything. The Jabber accounts are based on extensions. But what we've done is we've moved a lot of that stuff that we've done in extensions is really their users. You know, so we what we and most people don't like to re remember their extension. You know, we've noticed this is very calm behavior, and many people actually have extensions that don't need anything. They basically are phones that are in a lobby or in, you know, just in a, in a common area, and they don't need anything but the ability to dial, and that's it. They're just basic. So what we've done is, is we've taken extensions and stripped out all of the user components. So the Jabber, the user portal, uh, the voicemail, all these things have been stripped and moved into this user. But you still have extensions. Extensions have call routing, and they have a few extra settings that allow you to set a few things that you, you could also set with the user, but they just give you that functionality so that you, know, you don't have to have a full user to actually go through that. So we're, what we're trying to concentrate on here is making our system a lot more flexible. Uh, so that's what we're talking about. Um, and as I said, we've made a lot of, we've even made interface improvements over the open source, and I'll show this some more to you. So now I'll get into the demo. So, so uh, this looks familiar to many of you. It looks a lot like the Druid open source version, uh, except it's got Druid Unified Communication Server on it. Um, so let me sort of get to you, show you the uh, extensions now. So what you're seeing here now is that all this configuration is stored in LDAP. Uh, the only configurations that are that are stored in files are the few asterisk configuration files that we actually need that that can't be stored in a real time architecture and they're very, and they're common and the phone configuration files which actually can easily be regenerated by our system so failover is very easy and um, you can see here I have extension user and device model so now I can actually have an extension that might just be attached to uh, device. So let me just show you that. Let me add an extension here. And you can see here with extensions, they just have a few basic settings. It's very, very, it's, it's very basic now. So I'm going to add an extension. And you'll see it show up there. Now, what I want to do is this. Let me, uh, let me actually uh, detach uh, this phone here. So I'm going to detach 1000. And now you can see here, you have users and devices that are attached. I'm going to device this device. Okay. And then I'm going to attach this. Okay. So now, um, this device is rebooting right now. But now you see here, there's no user. So this device could be sitting in a common area or sitting in a lobby, and it can simply dial out. And you can even restrict its dialing um, based on uh, sort of zones and things like that um, that we already provide. And you can even now edit the call routing. So you can see here I can click a call routing button. Now, look at this. It, just, it looks just like the user portal that we've had for you know, so, so long, except now it's accessible through the admin. So 
everyone, we've seen this, you know, bug report a ton of times, you know, where everyone on the user, on, 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 the, bu on the bug tracker basically says, why can't I access your uh, call routing from your admin? You know, I'm an administrator. I don't want to give my users access to the user portal. So you listen to that and you've actually said, okay, let's implement it in the admin side. So now we have this in the admin side and it's the same, you know, routing as before. So I can, you know, basically reduce this to say 15 and then if I want to, I can forward to a phone number, anything like that. So any questions so far? Okay. Yes. Uh, we are working on that actually. Uh, access control is something that we are working on the very next update actually of UCS 4 5. So it's part of the roadmap. And, but, but basically, um, this, this still allows you, this still will allow the admin to control the call routing if you wanted to. So you can set it up initially. Yeah. And we will probably port this feature to open, this feature will probably be in the open source pretty soon too. So this is a, it's pretty useful. It's been, it's been all over our bug tracker. So that's the thing. I don't know about the, the access control probably won't be. So just to let you know. Uh, but this will probably be. And so, now that I've talked about how you you know users and all these things, let me just show you a couple of things. Now, see with users, what we can do is now things have changed quite a bit. Okay, now users have all these options to their to their to their uh, at their disposal. Uh, we've now uh, added some fa uh, more advanced fax options for users. I know Rajiv is probably happy about this. He's the one who's been complaining about he wants the faxes not in. He just wants them gone. So we actually have support for that. Uh, you can disable the IM support for the user. Um, uh, all these other options are still available. The pin is actually stored with the user, and there's a password. Now this changes a lot of things. The password is now basically, this is the unified password. So this is replacing the unified pin. The main reason we've done this is mainly for security reasons. Numeric passwords are very easy to guess. And so we don't want people just using numeric passwords, especially on SIP accounts and other things. So another thing that's changed is, is that your SIP soft phone is now logged in through your username and password. And this is a very, very dramatic difference from before. Um, normally, you know, we, we talked about extension pin, we, were, we spewed this. Now it's username and password for the soft phone. And what are you? Um, we'll work on that. Uh, right now, we haven't, we, we, we're working on full integration with Active Directory. That's going to be in a very, that, that actually would say is we're actively working on it now. So this, uh, what's going to happen is, is that there will be an ability to use an Active Directory as a backend. And potentially, actually, even, I mean, we could maybe potentially look into replacing the LDAP server, per se. I'm more of a fan of looking into the backend support for the open LDAP and actually still using it. And I think it actually gives us a lot of flexibility. So there might. So as far as retrieving the password, we could probably look into it. It'll probably be there at some point. And what will happen is also we'll try to get identity management and basically allow you to say, if you create a user in the Active Directory, it should show up here. So things like that. So that's that's sort of uh, the active development that's work that's been, that's working on right now. But there's still a pin, and this is for anything that you use on the phone. So if you're doing voicemail you still need to enter a PIN because it's on the phone. If you're using um, agent login uh, through, you know, through the phone, you still need to use a PIN. You just can't change the phone interface. So that is sort of what's happened with the PIN. So the PIN is still a unified PIN, but it's only really unified as far as the phone is concerned. And I know this kind of changes things a little bit per se, but there are a lot of advantages for this. Uh, users. I mean, one thing that we're also deploying is a desktop application. And with the desktop application, username and password is a lot more natural with that than extension and pin. So that's one of the main reasons we switched to this architecture. And so, so that's uh, that. And, and uh, the auto provisioning is all there. There's nothing has really changed here. So you can see here, the only difference is, is that this is all stored in LDAP backend. So all this configuration is stored in a redundant backend. So you need to replicate it, you need a failover, this is all still going to be there. Um, another thing that's changed